This is a video about the absolute value of a real number. So if a is a real number, then the absolute value of a is, so the usual notation you've seen before, these two bars around a, that denotes absolute value of a. And what it is, is it's kind of this piecewise formula. It's a itself if a is positive, it is zero if a is equal to zero, should be zero there. And uh, it is negative a if a is already negative, because then think about it, that would be a double negative, which would be positive. And so as far as graph of absolute value goes, sure, it's this V that we're comfortable with. And I tried to color code, you know, each piece of it. Um, we're not doing too much with two dimensions right now with a graph. We're sticking to just the real line. So what I'll get to is a little bit later, thinking about absolute value as a distance between two real numbers. That's coming later on. But for now, this is just, we're talking about the same object that maybe you teach like in college algebra if you teach that class. So here are some properties of the absolute value that I'll take for granted. Um, you could look in a book, they will prove these. I'm gonna take these for granted to prove some other things that we'll use more often. But uh, as you see, you know, when you're multiplying the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. Uh, the absolute value, the square of the absolute value, is just the square. Uh, but then this is something useful that again, reminds me of college algebra. This absolute value inequality is the same thing as this compound inequality. And uh, a consequence of part C there is this one as well. Any real number is always larger than the opposite of the absolute value. And it's always at, at most the actual, actual absolute value. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use those properties to prove what is arguably one of the most important theorems in this whole class of real analysis, which is the triangle inequality. So what's the triangle inequality say? It tells me that if you have two real numbers, then the absolute value of the sum is always smaller than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. And uh, maybe you can think about it this way. What this is also trying to say is that uh, any one side of a triangle is always less than the sum of the other two sides. So how would you prove this thing? So from part D above, which is this one here, I know I'll apply that to, uh, oops, that should be a B there, I see. So B, so A should be between negative absolute value of A and absolute value of A. And similarly for B, and uh, so then what we'll do is we'll essentially add those two equations together. And so if you uh, do that there, if you add those two together, you'd get a plus b in the middle. And then I could factor a negative out of that. And if I do that, then what do you notice? Then this is minus absolute value of a plus b. And then on the far right side, I have absolute value of a plus b. So, uh, you know, what have I got there? I have that the absolute value of the middle, right? What is this compound inequality equivalent to? This compound inequality is equivalent to the following absolute value inequality, where the absolute value of the middle, which is right here, is less than or equal to this thing here, which is C. So that is this number C above here, which is also part C. Wow, that's a coincidence. That's kind of cool. Anyway, that would be the proof of the triangle inequality. So there are some other useful um, realizations of the triangle inequality. I'm gonna call this one the reverse triangle inequality, where the absolute value of the difference of these two numbers is always less than or equal to the uh, absolute value of the difference of just A and B. And so if we were gonna prove that, this is an interesting trick where we're gonna rewrite A in this sneaky way as a plus b minus b. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply the triangle inequality to split this up. So I'll apply the triangle inequality to this. So that would be less than or equal to, and again, there should be a b there, it just got erased. But I'll apply the triangle inequality, split it into this piece plus absolute value of this piece. And then finally what I'll do is I'll take this absolute value of b and I will subtract it to this side. And I'm gonna call this inequality star. I wanna keep track of this. So we just show that sure, absolute value of A minus absolute value of B, definitely less than or equal to just the absolute value of A minus B. What we're gonna do is play the same game with B. So I'm gonna rewrite B in that funny way. So B is the same thing as B minus A plus A. And I'm going to apply the triangle inequality to this side right here to split it. So that's less than or equal to B minus A plus absolute value of A. And same as before, I'm gonna subtract this to this side. So what does that look like? That looks like absolute value of B minus absolute value of A is less than or equal to absolute value of what's left over here, B minus A. And I'm gonna call this inequality double star. So that's enough of those. So what I'm going to do now, just for some convenience, 
if I say u is this expression, absolute value of a minus absolute value of b, and I say v is this one here, then what do I want to do? This says u is less than or equal to v. That's what star says. And similarly, look at this. This is just minus u then, and that's less than or equal to. That's the same thing as v. So let's recap. Single star says u is less than or equal to v. If you think about that, that's right here. And uh, double star says minus u is less, than or, is less than or equal to v. And that's this one right here. Wait a minute. What's another way to say these two inequalities here? That's the same thing as saying that just the absolute value of u is at most v. And why is that good? Go ahead and plug in what was this little u, this little substitution I did. Again, just to try to make explaining some of the pieces a little bit easier. Absolute value of the thing that I want is less than or equal to absolute value of a minus b. So triangle inequality with just a and b, a and b are not special, two numbers are not special. By induction, you can extend the triangle inequality to if you had, say, a million numbers, then you would split that into a million of these little sums here. And uh, we'll use summation notation a little bit later on, but if you've seen it before and you like it, the above here, instead of writing all these out, this is the same thing as the absolute value of the sum is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values, is what that says. So notice, when you take the absolute values and try to bring them inside the summation, what you get is something that is usually bigger than you know just this, the absolute value of the sum. Maybe that was confusing. So some more properties here. Finally, the way that we want to think about absolute value right now, because we're doing a lot of stuff just on the real line, just in one dimension, uh, we're going to think about the absolute value of a is just the distance from a to zero on a number line. And I've tried to draw you one over there. So here's a, here's zero. So I'm saying that the units between them is absolute value of a. All right, so a new concept that we'll also be using a lot in this class. If you have a real number a and you've got some positive number epsilon, then we're going to define what's called an epsilon neighborhood of a. And what it is, is it's the set that I'll denote by V with a subscript of epsilon and these parentheses around A, so that's the notation for it. But what is it? By the way, when you see the colon equal, that means this is the definition of this thing. The definition of this is about to follow. Uh, but then what is it though? I'm just saying it should be all real numbers where absolute value of X minus A is less than epsilon. That is something that looks like it's kind of scary. So let's kind of parse out what this means. I can handle this absolute value inequality. I know that that is the same thing as this compound inequality. So V epsilon A, it's just all the numbers uh, such that X minus A is between negative epsilon and epsilon. And maybe I could rearrange that. I'll just add A to both sides. So it's the set of all real numbers X such that X is between A minus epsilon and A plus epsilon. And maybe thinking about V epsilon in this way will help me draw a picture and make this set a lot less scary. V epsilon of A is just this little red interval on the number line here. It's all the stuff that's epsilon units away from A to the left and epsilon units away from A on the right, is what my little picture is trying to say to you there. So that little red window is what I'm calling an epsilon neighborhood of A. All right, so what are you going to do with this? Well, if X is a member of V epsilon A, then that says that X is within epsilon units of A. And so, in other words, if X is in the red, then it's at, at most epsilon units away from A. That's what that says above. Another way to say that then, though, if epsilon is something that's really small, if epsilon is a tiny number, then you've got kind of a small window around A. And, you know, by small, I put that in quotes, who knows what small means, but uh, if, if epsilon is some small number, then what we'd say then is that X is close to A if it's in that epsilon neighborhood of A. So these epsilon neighborhoods are going to help us make precise the definition of, of close. We're going to apply, again, like some kind of a mathematical uh, um, formality to what it means to be close. All right, so if A is a real number, to say that X is in an epsilon neighborhood of A for every single epsilon, that can only happen if X is actually equal to A. So let's give a little proof of this. So what if X was in every single epsilon neighborhood of A? Well, that means that this inequality, this compound inequality, is always satisfied for every single epsilon. And by the way, I just threw zero here just because, well, absolute value is always non-negative. So why is that good? This should look familiar, right? If I've got some real number that is between zero and epsilon for every possible positive number epsilon, this is something from the last video, that can only happen if your number is zero. 
Well, if x minus a is zero, then x equals a, which is exactly what we needed to show. And so hopefully that wasn't too mysterious. Maybe before I go to the purple, I could just zoom in. Um, what was I trying to say? Maybe I'll go up to my picture up here. If you had a number that was in every possible little epsilon window neighborhood you put around A, well, look at those windows. They keep shrinking closer and closer to A. So that little proof down there was just kind of justifying that the only X that's in every one of these is just A itself. All right, now to the purple. What is a way to put all this stuff together? The triangle inequality, and these epsilon neighborhoods. If X is in an epsilon over two window of A, and if Y is also in an epsilon over two neighborhood of A, I'm saying window and neighborhood interchangeably, sorry about that. Well then the sum X plus Y is within an epsilon neighborhood of two times A. And just to give you a little picture, this picture is not gonna make too much sense, but uh, if X and Y are here, right, they're within epsilon over two of A, then when you add all this stuff together, X plus Y is gonna be within epsilon of two A. So that's kind of the intuition for it. How would you actually show this? What do we want to show? We want to show x plus y is in v epsilon of 2a. So how do you unravel that to get something to play with? That's the same thing as trying to show that x plus y minus 2a, that difference in absolute value, has to be less than epsilon. And so what we'll do then, maybe where you're going with this, if that's what you want to show, what you'll typically do is start with this and start applying some tricks like the triangle inequality. So let's do that. So I'm gonna apply the triangle inequality to this in a moment, but what I'm gonna do, I know how X and A relate to each other, and I also know how Y and A relate to each other. Well, this is pretty cool, because I've got negative 2A here. I'm just gonna write that as X minus A plus Y minus A. And then now what I'll do is I'll apply the triangle inequality to these two pieces. So the triangle inequality lets me split these up, and what do I know about this? The distance from X to A, I know that it's at most epsilon over two. That's what it means to say X is in that epsilon over two neighborhood of A. And by the same logic, this distance from Y to A, I know that it's at most epsilon over two from that hypothesis right there. So this sum right here is strictly less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two. And again, I just wrote down because X and Y are within that epsilon over two neighborhood of A. And finally, if you add those together, that's epsilon. So then what did you have? You showed me this. It's right here.